Hello guys. So in this video we are going to talk about the perceptron learning rule. So in the previous video we saw we talked about the linear discriminant functions. We saw that there can be uh, these linear discriminant functions can be described as g of x is equal to omega transpose x where omegas are nothing but the weights and x is the input. So over here for this example purpose I had taken the line where uh, weights were this and this was the input in a two dimensional space. So we saw that every such line has a positive half where the values of x1, x2 over here any value you take x1, x2 over here it will give a positive value of g of x and any value um, x1, x2 over here will give a negative value of g of x. So this can be this region can be uh, told as the positive half of the line and this region can be told as the negative line of the negative half of the line. So what we actually do is we exploit this particular property of the line. What we say is one of the class lies in the positive half and one of the class lies in the negative half. Now, so we will uh, <clears throat> we will we'll going to train this perceptron algorithm. So in the training phase, what happens in the training phase is that we know that uh, which data belongs to which class. Suppose, uh, suppose I have this example over here. So here I know that suppose this belongs to some class 1 and this belongs to some class 2 and I want to separate both of these using perceptron rule, right? Okay. So that is what we have, the ground truth. The ground truth says that these d1, d2, dn are uh, what we know basically that uh, suppose that we know that these samples belong to class 1 so I will have djs is equal to suppose 1 for all these samples so wherever these samples are present I will correspondingly put dj is equal to 1 and for all these samples dj will be minus 1 so why plus 1 and minus 1 that is just because of this fact that I just want to know whether it lies in the positive half or whether it lies in the negative half. So I'm just going to check the sign of my output. I will use this as my output. We will see how we will use that. So I will use this as the output and just check the sign of the output. If the sign is positive, then I will say it belongs to the positive class. And if the sign is negative, I will say that it belongs to the negative class. So I can name suppose this class as the positive class and this as the negative class. So that was about the ground truth. Now this di can either be 1 or it can be minus 1. It has no other option. So we are going to see about the binary case only for now. Now I have data. So I have these data samples. So this data are mixed. It is not like other uh, other training algorithms that we learned in this uh, series of videos earlier that I have this data separate and this data separate. Here all these datas are in this particular vector form. So x represents all the class 1 and class 2 data x1, x2, xn and it is like this suppose I have uh, some x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 suppose okay and suppose this is the case so suppose this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 suppose so you can see that these three datas belong to one class and these three datas belong to the other class so correspondingly the D matrix that I have written over here will have 1, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. So for the positive class, so I can say this as a positive class or some class 1. 
the these the ground truths i know that these are uh, belonging to this class is 1 1 1 and for these the ground truth is minus 1 and minus 1 because they are belong to the suppose the negative class so that is the notion of positive and negative please understand this so i, I can name it as class 1 class 2 also but uh, naming it positive class and negative class is more convenient because the algorithm is such that uh, for positive class the d's will be positive and my i want a line such that its output i want a line such that this its output becomes positive for all these set of points and uh, it becomes negative for all these set of points right let us visualize the algorithm so suppose i have taken some initial weight vector some random weight vector which is say something like this so this is my some random initial weight vector which is giving me this line now what i am going to do is i am going to check every input whether it lies in the positive half so suppose this is the positive half of the line and this is the negative half of the line now i am going to check whether each input whether it lies in the positive half or it lies in the negative half okay i know that this particular samples belong to some class 1 which i can say this is some say this is class 1 and all these samples belong to some class 2 these samples belong to class 2 so what i am going to do is i am going to assign a same dj value for this particular class so let this dj be 1 and for this class i am going to assign some dj is equal to minus 1 that means at the end at the end at the final of the algorithm i will want all these samples to be in the positive half hence the plus 1 and i would want all these samples in the negative half hence minus 1 so this is what i want to do and i will go like this so now i have this initial weight and i want to reach a weight like this some something like this so let us see how can we get this so i have this now just find whether each of this inputs lies in, on this line's positive half or negative half because i have just randomly generated this line and i am calculating the g of x that is i am just calculating whether which sample lies in the positive half and the negative half so if see now this sample is in the positive half of this line and i want it like this i want it to be in the positive half right i want this sample to be in the positive half so i will not update the weights because for this sample this is in the positive half it is right for this sample also it is in the positive half for this also it is in the positive half as i go down say suppose if i consider this sample so now you can see for this sample this lies in the negative half of the of the play, uh, line this is the negative half this sample lies and actually i want this sample to be in the positive half so there is a mismatch this is wrong so what we will do is we'll update the line such that now the new line will be something like this suppose it will try to take this in the positive half so new line can be something like this so let me make it over here suppose this is my new line that i have got now that i have updated my weights now let us again check so this is the new line right so now that i have updated the weights now let us again check whether which samples are in the positive half and the negative half so this is the positive half of this line and this is the negative half of this line so now you can see all these samples are sort of correctly classified all these had to be in the positive half and for this line they are in the positive half but you can see that there are some samples over here which should be in the negative half but they are in the positive half of this line so again for these samples there will be some some weight updation and the weight updation will try to just something like this so it will try to keep all these in the negative half and try to uh, separate it like this so we wanted a line something like this but we got a line 
say like this so now you can see that uh, both of the classes are well separated by this line you can see that this data now is in the positive half that we wanted of this line and this is in the negative half that we wanted so this is exactly what perceptron does you you first take an initial estimate of the uh, weight say suppose this is my weights and then calculate the output that you want if suppose a sample lies at the wrong half you update the uh, sample uh, you update the uh, what we say weights and then uh, like this if you go you will uh, get a line that is well separating both the uh, classes so this is the actual visualization of the algorithm let us see how can we formulate this mathematically so we are uh, initializing the weights randomly so we can we can have this this weight that i've initialized in the beginning this you can either uh, do all zeros or you can take any random value that, that as i've taken over here next you calculate the output so the output is nothing but we have seen that it is g of x is equal to omega transpose x but since here there are many samples so all these samples are there so there will be xj where xj you can see it is this over here all the points over here so these points are nothing but xj's so this is my y this is what output i want and i will just see the sign of this output because i i don't know i don't uh, care whether this is how much far i just want to know whether it is in the positive half or is it in the negative half so i will calculate the sign of this output sign function is like this for all the positive values of y it will give you plus 1 output for all the negative values it will give you minus 1 output so this yj will be either plus 1 or minus 1 if the sample is in the positive half it will give you plus 1 if the sample is in the negative half it will give you minus 1 now if there is a mismatch so here you can see if suppose for this sample initially for this sample this was in the positive half so its y value would have been 1 because it was in the positive half its y value had been 1 and but its d value is also 1 because at the end also I want it to be in the positive half so both of them are 1 so 1 minus 1 will make this particular term 0 and there will be no updation, no updation of weight. So this line will remain like this, which is what we want, right? If there is a correct uh, classification, then I don't want to change my line. Only when, suppose I take this particular sample. So for this sample, my y would have been negative. For this sample, my y would have been negative and my dj would have been 1 so you can see 1 minus of minus 1 will give you 1 plus 1 so this value will become 2 and now what i am going to do is i am going to just add the weight this was my previous weights so these are my previous weight now i want new weights i want to change my weights so the new weights are just going to be some eta times this particular value so that is 2 over here for this case into xj so what is xj xj is my input so i want to basically shift it towards the input so this is what it is uh, doing to me now wh why this eta so this eta is a learning rate eta tells you that uh, how much you want to shift so now i could have a shift like this which is a smaller shift or i could have a shift like this I could go very fast also so this is all depending on eta if eta is having a very large value so it will shift very rapidly but these rapid changes would also be a problem because it if suppose this data is very easy but if there is a complex kind of data uh, some data like this then it would be very difficult for that to converge so this eta is a learning rate so normally we keep eta in 0 0.5 0 0.3 depends on the application so that is eta so that will tell you how much you want to shift towards the input that is all so like this you keep on iterating for every input 
and keep on updating the weights as and when you uh, feel that a, a particular sample is wrongly classified and you, finally you will get a line that is separating both the classes so for a linearly separable data so this data is linearly separable i can have a line which can linearly separate both the data stop when all the data is correctly classified perceptron guarantees you that you will always get a line that can separate both of this data uh, both of this data 100% without some error and you will get this line in perceptron so now the question one can ask is how can i be so sure that i will get this line always uh, for any kind of data which is linearly separable how can i get a line that is linearly separable always so that we will see in the next video why a uh, perceptron rule can converge for any linearly separable data we will see this in the next video thank you so much for watching thank you